To be the radio voice of Michigan football is a dream job. It's probably the best radio job in college football. And only four people have had it since World War II. Bob Eufer, Frank Beckman, Jim Branser, and Doug Karsh. We are so very fortunate and lucky to get that position. And people have called me the voice of Michigan football. I did play-by-play -play the last eight years, but the real voice of Michigan football was Bob Eufer, and always will be. Bob took Michigan football broadcasts from the neighborhood and from Ann Arbor to the nation. He was bombastic. He would say things you can't say today, but in Ann Arbor, he was beloved because he said those things. And they're tearing down Michigan's coveted M Club banner. They will meet a dastardly fate here for that. Bob got set in the early 80s. Frank Beckman was next in line, and Frank knew what shoes he was filling. But Frank also had his own style and his own approach. And immediately, people took to Frank because Bob passed the torch. It wasn't like Frank took it. Let Frank run with it, and man, he sprinted with it. Charles Woodson down the sideline. He's got to go all the way. Touchdown, Michigan. Save the freshman hard. When Frank retired, I was asked to do the play-by-play. -play. I was walking into a situation that had been filled by two giants. And from my perspective, I was just trying to keep the seat warm because they had set the tone. The long drought is over. Ohio State is vanquished. And the Wolverines are going to go to Indianapolis with a chance to win a Big Ten title. Doug has been doing sidelines for a lot of years. He worked with Beckman and I. Then he worked with Dan Deardorff and I. He understands the importance of the broadcast. I think he realizes the position is huge. It's an incredible honor to get to do this job. And I don't get nervous until people start talking about how few people have held this job. The broadcasters are woven into the history of the program. And that's an overwhelming thought. When I got the job, the two questions I got asked the most, one was, what's gonna be your touchdown call? And my feeling was, I don't know yet. To the 10, to the five, touchdown, Ronnie Bell. At some point, something's gonna click and people are gonna like it, and we'll just go with that. We're not there yet. <laughs> the time will come. There's a certain connection emotionally to this university and to this football team that Doug has. And I think that's part of what's unique about the play-by-play -play voice of University of Michigan. I grew up as a kid in Ann Arbor really hating Ohio State. A big part of my life was Michigan football. My dad was a professor here. My family has had season tickets since the early 70s. I like to say I grew up right down there in section 17, row 80, seat 30 or 31. I actually went to Michigan State, but throughout that, still was coming to games here. Being a Michigan State grad, I do hear about it quite a bit from more Michigan State fans. Some Michigan fans give me a hard time about it, but I was a Michigan fan while I was there. I try to provide context to the Michigan fan, having grown up and understand what being a Michigan fan is about. The Michigan-Ohio State game is the best Saturday of the year. I've seen some great seasons. They're not forgotten, but they certainly feel like they get tainted if you lose to the Buckeyes at the end. For Michigan and for Ohio State, it really kind of is the Super Bowl because if you win that one, it's bragging rights for a year. And the bragging rights in that game mean a hell of a lot. For Doug to call his first Ohio State game, 
I instantly put the pressure on when he was thinking about doing this in terms of, hey, Eufer, Beckman, Brandstatter, Karsh. Like, that's a ton of pressure to begin with. Now, all of a sudden, hey, Michigan, 11-0. Ohio State, 11-0. Winner goes to the Big Ten Championship. If J.J. McCarthy makes a big play, your call. You're going to hear it on every major network across the country, and then forever. You're going to hear what goes on in this game from the story that Doug Karsh is telling you. Yeah, I better have a good game, huh? Uh, I will prepare, hopefully be ready. I don't like to practice anything. Whatever comes out, hope it's good. It better be.